Well, everyone, what to do with dirty, icky, dusty keyboards that might be malfunctioning because they're just so used and I've had a little guck spilled on it from soda, drinks, maybe even just sticky stuff on it from who knows where. So I want to show a little video here that it's possible to make these things look brand spanking new. Possible to wash them in water and soap? I think so, I've been doing it for a few years now. So, probably been that some videos out there or some people would say, well, if you're gonna do that, you know, I might wanna use like a generic little keyboard here. That's all well and good. And actually this is a keyboard that I did wash, um, was used by a family member for a number of years, had no sticky stuff or anything, but definitely a lot of lint and dust all over it. And I usually like to use a paintbrush, toothbrushes even to clean that, but still, you still get occasional issues here and there and it just doesn't clean it 100%. But in this video, I wanted to show about washing the keyboard like this, mechanical, noisy as you can tell, and also LED backlit as well too. This keyboard actually is working, um, but as I'll show you in a little bit, just having issues with hitting a couple of keys, particularly the A, and two or three A's come out, and I'm pretty sure some of you cringe because you're like, well, I know what that feels like. I've had a keyboard that maybe cost me over a hundred bucks, and it's giving me that issue too, for whatever reason. Can't guarantee that this will actually solve the issue, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I mean, why not? I mean, if I try to type out, couple of sentences and I'm getting double space bars and double letters, what good is it gonna be? Whether it's a $10 keyboard or a $100 keyboard. And just to give you a little demo of the uh, issue with this keyboard in particular. Try a little slower. I'm sure some of you guys cringe at seeing this. You know exactly what I'm talking about when keyboards just start to do this out of nowhere. Besides water to wash this keyboard, I'm just gonna be using some soap and a regular cheap brush here. And so there are two little brushes here. A used toothbrush also comes in handy if you have one around. So here's our test subject in the bathroom already in the tub. And uh, good idea just to wrap the end of the cable for the keyboard up. Try not to get it too wet, even though if it gets wet, well, in this case, in the shower, it's gonna get wet. I tie wrapped it up here, and I'll just leave it out of the way as much as I can. I already got my brush here ready with some soap. And a little easier to do this when you have one of those little handheld things to spray water all over the place, especially when they have different modes. So I'll go, let's go ahead and uh, get some water on this Last thing. warning, if you don't wanna see this, I don't know about you, but I definitely saw some stuff come out. Oh, try not to press too hard like I am right now. It might get some keys popping all over the place. In some very unusually comical way. Ideally, if you want, it's actually better if you use this, hold the keyboard one hand, and you have the shower in the other. I'm just doing this with one hand here because I only have one hand available. I got the camera being held by the other. So ideally, you're trying not to get this thing soaked in water. You just want to sprinkle it, kind of like the, you know, those water-resistant watches as opposed to waterproof. Definitely does wonders. 
All right. And definitely try not to use hot water on this, especially really hot. It just might make a little things weird. I'm using right now just a little slightly warmer cold water. Now, if you're doing it like I am, every few seconds, just rinse it out. It might actually even be better to put it against the wall, but as you can see, that's not going to work for me. I think that should be it for this one. Oh, bumped my hand to the camera. Definitely uh, give, take both hands, hold the keyboard, give it a swing to kind of dry it out a little bit like you would a towel, get some water out of here. And the most important thing is to get this thing to dry up and definitely uh, put it on, let's say a fan or somewhere, probably just hand dry it a little bit with a paper towel and we'll see how it works out. I gave it a good two to two and a half hours of time to dry up and looks pretty good so far. I use basically uh, just one of those uh, tabletop fans. Uh, this one's made out of metal, so it holds a little bit more air than your typical plastic one. I had the keyboard basically upside down like this on the grill and um, that allowed basically the air to just blow up into the keyboard. I moved it around, repositioned it every 30 minutes or so. So different sections of the keyboard, like here and here, and then another 30 minutes here and here, and then just keep going back and forth, just to make sure both ends of the keyboard, not just the middle, gets a good amount of airflow. So definitely a good idea to give this thing a good ample amount of time to dry up. I did once, a very long time ago, use a regular uh, keyboard to that I was washed and um, maybe only gave it a good hour to dry up and I started to see some really odd behavior. Just hitting one key, I would get a bunch of keys as if I pressed 20 or 10 or so like that all at the same time. So let's go ahead and plug this in and uh, definitely a good idea to make sure this is all nice and dried up as well too. You don't want to plug some water USB port into the computer. I'm sure that'll uh, <laughs> give you some unex unexpected results there already. Looks pretty brand new here. A couple of little scratches, obviously, and nicks from previously, but the keys actually, the video I hope does it justice, but looking at it in person, it really does look great. And all the areas in between the keys, you can just tell everything's just gone. Keys lit up. This is an LED backlit keyboard. Put it on the max for now, I guess. And um, looks like it's working. Number lock is going on and off. Guess there's only one way to test this out. Let's see if this actually resolved our issue with the uh, crappy A's and whatnot. Try to position this here for you guys so the keyboard's not in the way. All right, here we go. Same phrase as before. Oh, yeah, I'll try to move in a little bit more. Start over. Wow, flawless. Let me try to get you guys a little closer here. Let's do that again. Yeah, 
You know, I honestly didn't really think this was going to help with that. I'm impressed. This one's not so bad, but I might just wash it anyway. I'm just give it a quick rinse. You didn't think I was just going to stop here with one keyboard. Again, remember, give it a good swing. Get some water out. And just dry it up with a little hand towel. So let's see how this one does. This keyboard didn't have any issues with double clicking or typing in keys as the other keyboard was having, but um, I did want to just clean it up since it was a little dirty. Let's go ahead and plug this one in too. This one has three different colors here. And same thing, seems to be working just fine. Keyboard actually looks really good, shiny. See, you actually don't see my own reflection there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, these aren't your typical 10 to $20 keyboards. These are actually backlit keyboards. Um, this keyboard, I believe, ranges between somewhere above 40 to like 70, and this keyboard here being mechanical, I believe it was around a good 80 to somewhere maybe in the $100 area, so. Yep, still locks the start button. Got any questions about this? Let me know, I'll definitely shoot out some advice to you. Maybe I'll go ahead and uh, give this a shot on even a more pricier keyboard, like one of the Corsair ones or other keyboards, mechanical keyboards, obviously, even though this is obviously one. If you like this video, go ahead and shoot a like, subscribe. I'll definitely be shooting more videos very soon. Thanks again for watching. Oh, they actually do look great.